$20 billion. That's the price tag of a port China built on islands in the East China Sea, 30 kilometers off the coast. From above, it looks like a city of cranes, roads, and bridges. But on the ground, you won't hear the noise of dock workers shouting or see lines of truck drivers waiting. Instead, the entire place runs with almost no people in sight. This is Yangshan Deepwater Port, and it's one of the busiest in the world. In just the first six months of 2025, Yangshan handled more than 14 million containers. That's more than the entire annual throughput of some of Europe's biggest ports. But how do you even build a port on remote islands in the East China Sea? How does it actually function with so few people? And why has this single port become so important that it can ripple through global energy markets? Let's find out. Almost everything around you, your phone, your shoes, even the coffee in your cup, probably pass through a port. Around 90% of world trade by volume travels by sea. Ports are not just concrete docks, they're the arteries of the global economy. If they clog, trade slows. If they expand, trade grows. For China, this role is even bigger. As the world's manufacturing hub, China depends on moving raw materials in and finished goods out. Every smartphone shipped to Europe, every machine tool sent to Africa, every bulk load of iron ore imported from Australia, all of it passes through China's ports. But by the late 1990s, there was a looming problem. Existing ports were reaching their limits. Shanghai was already one of the busiest in the world, but it sat on the Yangtze River Delta, where water depth wasn't enough for the new generation of mega ships that carried more than 20,000 containers at a time. Dredging could only go so far. Expanding inland was impossible. The city was already packed with industry and people. Ports in Los Angeles, Rotterdam, and Singapore were feeling the same pressure. Ships were getting bigger and ports had to keep up. But China decided to take a different path. Instead of only dredging or expanding crowded coastlines, they asked a bigger question. What if we move the port out into the open sea, where water depth is unlimited? That single decision would lead to one of the boldest engineering projects in modern trade, the creation of Yangshan Deep Water Port. About 30 kilometers into the East China Sea lies a cluster of rocky islands known as the Donghai Islands. These islands were remote, windswept, and sparsely inhabited, but they had one major advantage. Naturally, deep waters, more than 15 meters. That's enough for the world's largest container ships to dock directly without waiting for tides or dredging. The idea was simple, but radical. If you could build a port here, you'd bypass the limitations of the Yangtze altogether. You'd have the depth for megaships, the space for expansion, and the ability to design a brand new facility from scratch. Of course, this vision raised daunting questions. How do you build a port on rocky islands exposed to storms? How do you connect it back to Shanghai's industrial base? And could the payoff justify the billions in investment? China's answer was yes. Building offshore meant breaking free from geography, creating a port that could handle the future of shipping, not just the present. And it sent a message. China was not just participating in global trade, it intended to lead it. Construction began in 2002. The first challenge was connecting the islands to the mainland. The solution was the Donghai Bridge, a 32.5-kilometer span stretching across open sea. At the time, it was one of the longest sea bridges in the world. To put that into perspective, it's roughly the distance from Manhattan to Newark Airport, except here, you're driving entirely over water. With the bridge built, engineers turned to the islands themselves. They blasted granite hillsides, reclaimed millions of cubic meters of land, and built massive breakwaters to shield the terminal from harsh waves and typhoons. The project rolled out in phases, Yangshan 1, 2, 3, and 4. Each phase added new berths, new cranes, and more capacity. By 2017, the port was handling over 40 million containers annually, pushing Shanghai to the top of the list as the busiest port city on Earth. And it hasn't stopped growing. In 2025, work began on the north side of Xiaoyangshan Island, the next fully automated terminal. This expansion is staggering. New berths for ships up to 70,000 tons, a designed throughput of 11.6 million containers and shoreline extended by more than six kilometers. 
To achieve that, nearly 100 million cubic meters of land will be reclaimed. The first section is set to open in 2026, further cementing Yangshan's global dominance. Every phase has been a balancing act, fighting the sea, building during storms, and keeping existing operations running while expansion continued. But step by step, Shanghai turned a chain of rocky islands into a cornerstone of world trade. If you visited most ports around the world, you'd see organized chaos, cranes swinging, truck drivers lining up, workers signaling each other across noisy yards. Yangshan looks nothing like that. Here, the machines do the work. The process starts the moment a ship docks. Giant key cranes move into place. Unlike traditional cranes, these have no operators inside. Instead, they're run remotely through advanced computer systems. Containers are lifted and lowered with precision, at speeds a human operator could never match. On the dock, containers are placed onto driverless trucks called automated guided vehicles. These don't have steering wheels, cabs, or drivers. Instead, they navigate using GPS, sensors, and digital maps. If you stood nearby, you'd watch a silent convoy of trucks glide past, never needing a break. From there, the containers head to storage yards. Here, automated stacking cranes take over, moving boxes with algorithms that decide the most efficient layout. Every container is tracked in real time, so when a truck or train comes to pick one up, the system already knows exactly where it is and how to retrieve it. Even the fueling process is shifting. In 2025, Yangshan introduced ultra-low sulfur fuel oil bunkering, a cleaner way to supply ships with fuel while they're docked. It's part of a broader push to cut emissions and meet international shipping standards. The result is a port that runs 24-7 with incredible speed and accuracy. Fewer people on the ground means fewer accidents, machines don't tire, and their precision reduces errors. That's why Yangshan can process millions of containers with a workforce that looks small compared to its vast scale. The numbers tell the story. In the first half of 2025, Yangshan handled 14.026 million containers, a 7.3% increase over the same period in 2024. That alone accounted for more than half of Shanghai's total throughput. Shanghai as a whole processed 27.065 million containers in the first half of 2025, keeping it firmly at the top as the world's busiest port city. For comparison, that's more than double what the Port of Los Angeles handles in an entire year. Nationwide, Chinese ports processed 112 million containers between January and April 2025, up nearly 8%. Even with global supply chain turbulence, China's ports, and Yangshan in particular, are still growing. And growth is not just about numbers. The expansion on Xiaoyangshan Island promises another 11.6 million containers of annual capacity once complete. That means the records being broken today may soon be overtaken again. However, Yangshan is more than a Chinese port. It's a global lever of influence. As part of the Belt and Road Initiative, it strengthens China's ability to move goods worldwide. It's also building new links. In 2025, Shanghai signed a deal with the Port of Barcelona to create a green and digital shipping corridor. That means cleaner ships on this route and shared digital systems for faster, more efficient trade. But global reach brings global tension. In August 2025, the United States sanctioned the Yangshan Shengong fuel storage facility, accusing it of handling Iranian oil. The reaction was immediate. China's fuel futures markets spiked in volatility. It was a clear reminder that Yangshan is not just about containers, it's tied into the energy trade and geopolitics. Against rivals like Singapore, Rotterdam, and Los Angeles, Yangshan's advantage is clear. Automation and scale allow it to move goods faster and cheaper. For China, that's not just an economic edge, it's strategic power. Hearing that a port runs without humans naturally raises a question, what happened to the workers? At Yangshan, the traditional dock worker roles, driving trucks, guiding cranes, stacking containers, have mostly disappeared. But that doesn't mean people vanished. Thousands were retrained as system operators, IT specialists, and maintenance crews. Instead of moving boxes by hand, they monitor systems from control rooms or repair the equipment that never stops moving. The benefits are clear, fewer accidents and safer conditions. Injury rates are lower than at traditional ports, but the transition is not easy for everyone. Older workers often struggle to shift into technical roles, while younger, tech-savvy employees thrive. 
It shows both sides of automation, higher efficiency and safety, but also tough questions about jobs and the social cost of replacing labor with machines. Yangshan is an engineering marvel, but it's not perfect. The first challenge is cost. Building a port in the sea has already consumed more than $20 billion, and with expansions underway, the figure continues to climb. Some argue the same money could have built multiple conventional ports elsewhere. The environment is another concern. Blasting granite, dredging deep channels, and reclaiming millions of cubic meters of land disrupted marine ecosystems. Environmentalists warn that the long-term damage to the East China Sea may not be fully understood. Technology itself is another risk. The port depends on AI-driven systems and automated equipment to keep thousands of containers moving in sync. But what happens if those systems fail? A cyber attack, a major glitch, or even a prolonged power outage could paralyze operations. Ports that rely more heavily on human labor have vulnerabilities too, but at least people can improvise. Machines can't. Geopolitics adds another layer. The U.S. sanctions placed on the Yangshan Shengang fuel storage facility in 2025 showed how quickly international politics can ripple through the port. Futures markets in China were shaken almost overnight. For a port that handles such a large share of global trade, those shocks are a reminder of how exposed Yangshan is to political decisions made far beyond its shores. And finally, there's nature itself. Yangshan sits in open sea, exposed to typhoons and storm surges. Rising sea levels from climate change could add new risks in the coming decades. Engineers have built seawalls and breakwaters, but whether they'll be enough for the long term is still uncertain. Globally, ports are following this trend. In Europe and Asia, smart port projects are underway, but Yangshan is setting the pace. Its green corridor, Deal with Barcelona, shows it's not just keeping up with trends, it's actively shaping them. Looking further ahead, Yangshan could become the model for ports of the future, offshore, automated, and low emission, a place where artificial intelligence, robotics, and sustainable energy run the show. Other countries may adapt their own versions, but for now, Yangshan is several steps ahead. By 2035 or 2040, the way ports look around the world may owe a lot to what China built here in the East China Sea. From blasting granite on remote islands to moving more than 14 million containers in half a year, it is proof of how far China is willing to go to control the arteries of global trade. But the bigger question is, will every major port follow this path, or is Yangshan a unique experiment only China could afford? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you soon in the next one.